you could tell that the the, the dogs were, were trying to do different stuff and just get the ball forward at, at, at any cost. But when, when they sent English in there a little bit more, particularly around centre bounce, it helped. I wanted to talk about the ruck battle. Uh, we saw on Saturday night uh, Austin McInerney at, at will trying to take the ball out of the ruck and, and kick it forward. Um, obviously, the Bulldogs um, midfielders are generally backing themselves to, to win the ball around the stoppage. But when McInerney was you know, pulling it out of the ruck and kicking it forward, that kind of rendered that useless. And it's probably one of the um, you know, defining parts in the early stages of the game as to why Brisbane got such a big lead up. Assuring that Steph Martin isn't going to be available this week, which we think he's not, how would you set out the Bulldogs in terms of their rucks against Scott Lysett and Peter Laddams and, I mean, even if Todd Marshall goes through there? The easy answer is English has got to play in there. Um, I think you, you, you just put your, your, your team and we saw it, didn't we? I think five goals were kicked in 15 disposals and, and, and they both kicked three, two out of centre bounce. So it wasn't, but it was the way, wasn't it? it it's what gave Cameron the, the one-on-one and the one-on-one opportunities forward of the ball. So you could tell that the, the, the dogs were, were trying to do different stuff and just get the ball forward at, at, at any cost. But when, when they sent English in there a little bit more, particularly around centre bounce, it helped. Um, and centre bounce is really the only time where you get equal numbers. Um, but if you if you're on the back foot from right from the start, it it, it makes it difficult. And and you're not going to win them all. Um, but it was the way that they were winning them. So were they clean exits? A lot of them were. Were they dirty? Some of them towards the back of the game. So you can you can lose centre bounce, but then really lose it. And then it's it's really difficult to defend. It's not the end of the world, but where, where you can't have them just waltzing out like, like um, the big O was doing and giving them really good field position, let alone a really good scoring position. In terms of Bonson Pally, if he's 75% fit, do you play you know, majority up forward because they've got such a deep midfield? Or where, where, where's the line should be drawn in your opinion? Yeah, look, if he's fit, he plays. If he doesn't, he probably doesn't play. I think that's that's really the conversation that you have with coach and captain. Um, you know, those two would have enormous respect for each other. Bontepelli knows the the consequences if he's not right and he does play and he doesn't perform well. You know, clearly he'll do his reputation a lot more harm than good and he's a selfless player. You can see, you know, the character of the guy. So I wouldn't have thought he'd be putting anyone, anyone in front of the team, let alone himself. So if he's fit... You know, he doesn't have to try in this week, but um, it, it, it's a significant risk if he's not fit. Now, is 75% Bontepelli better than 100% someone else? Well, that's not that easy, particularly when you're up against, you know, you're, you're up against a grand final position and, and a prelim, and we know how hard they're going to be. It's We know how combative it's going to be. It's not going to be a perfect world to say, Bontepelli, you're just going to have to play forward because it doesn't, probably suit the team dynamics to it and is he capable up up front to do it so he'll know if he's right or not and and they'll make that right and they'll make the the decision that the best suits the, the footy club